Hey everyone, Jeremy from thecustomgeek.com here, and I wanted to show you my square inch of goodness, quote unquote. So basically, this is just um, an Atmel at Mega328 uh, broken out into, uh, all the pins are broken out. It has a 16 megahertz crystal caps, uh, cap for the FTDI cable, uh, an LED on pin 13, and a power LED. That's all it is. But this is incredibly handy if you want to stick this somewhere small and you only have a limited amount of space. So it's basically an Arduino uh, minus USB serial communications and power management. So if you have clean power that you're working with and you don't need uh, to upload new sketches via USB, you can have an FTDI adapter, then uh, this guy is pretty neat. So um, I've had a couple of requests to show how to solder TQFP packages, which is this guy right here. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that next. All right, guys, we have our parts layout here. Uh, this is the board. Um, from uh, Osh Park, very nice, and um, this is just a, uh, a white LED um, resistor, a blue LED resistor, and then a crystal, two caps, 18 picofarad, and then a 0.1 microfarad cap, and then this guy here is your 328, this is a TQFP package, and uh, this obviously goes here, and so, without further ado, let's get going. Alright guys, so here we are ready to start. We're going to solder the crystal first, and a small disclaimer, I apologize for the camera angles. I have, I'm have i shooting for the microscope to be the better one, so the other one's kind of eh, and I'm wearing head magnifier, so if I bump the camera, please forgive me. So, we're going to put a little speck of solder on the board where the crystal is, and then we're actually going to do this, um, I'm going to do it with hot air, so I'm just going to do a little bit here, right here. Okay. So now I have four solder pads where I want the crystal to go. Now the bottom of the crystal, um, put a little bit of flux on it. Now we're going to go ahead and grab some hot air. We're going to slowly heat up the board here. We're heat up the crystal just a little bit, but heat up the board. The crystal, I'm trying to kind of hold that air in too long in one place. This is one of those trial and error skills. Um, basically learning not to set things on fire when you first get this thing so we're going to wait until the solder gets a little bit melty gets up to temperature I'm doing this at a really odd angle, I hope this turns out alright um, and there it goes, you can see that, I don't know how well you can see that, I'm not looking at the camera here or the monitor but um, so there's that let that cool down just a little bit, and it is on there. We're going to heat it up a little bit more. We're going to press it down that it's in place. If you have flux, this pretty much said seat in position anyway. Um, this is at a really sharp angle. I might take a picture of this setup here so you can see what I'm talking about. So, so that's it for our hot air. We'll do the rest by iron. Alright guys, so here we have our board here, and what I'm going to do here is, um, I'm going to cheat, and not really cheat, but I'm going to use flux uh, for this, so I'm just going to get this guy a little bit of flux on here. I'll show you a picture of the flux pen I'm using here, I'll remind myself to do that later. So we got some flux on the pads here, and we're going to take our iron, and we are going to just dab the corner of one of these pads, the upper the upper corner here, so I don't have my magnifiers on, so I'm going to be, try to be careful when I do this. If you want to do a better job, do not solder with cameras in your way. Okay. It was a little rough, but we got it. I'm gonna put my head magnifiers back on. So this is um, this is just the first pin. We're gonna seat it, get it in position by heating up that one pin and then moving the chip where we want to. Uh, we're gonna grab our chip over here, and then we are going to make sure that pin one is where it needs to be. And we are very carefully gonna grab this guy and kind of try to grab the. Um, the actual body of the of the chip and not the pins. You don't want to jam tweezers in between the pins because it might change the spacing. You want to be careful not to do that. So I'm going to try to wrap my arm around this stand. 
see how this works out. If not, I may stop the video and, and come back here. So. Alright, that's a good kind of start. Here, let's take a closer look at it. And I'll make sure that it's straight. Which it's not. So, actually, let's look at the scope. That's pretty good. It's not perfect. So, I'm going to pause the video and then I'll fix it. And then we'll come back if I need to do this without these cameras in the way. Alright, guys. So, now we have our chip all centered. And uh, we're just going to try to do this here again. I apologize. This is really hard to do with these cameras here. Um, so basically, uh, what I like to do is kind of heat up the leg a little bit. And then just touch the bottom tip there. If we do this, see that one's not quite there. It goes. I'll probably redo this without the camera, to be honest with you. Um, it's not 100% to my liking. You want to make sure that you don't bridge the connections like I just did. Or if you do, you just get a little bit of slaughter wick. Or sometimes you can just take your iron and just do that. You want to be careful that you don't work on this too much on one side or you don't want to heat the chip up that much. But it's it's not bad. So I look over at the microscope and I see that it's horrible. <laughs> so I'm going to retouch these pads. Uh, the third one in, uh, fifth and sixth. Uh, third, uh, actually six and seven. So this guy right here. All right, I'm going to try this without the microscope because uh, I need to show you that this is not the <laughs> the right way to do this. So uh, let's go ahead and switch cameras and we'll see how that turns out. What I generally like to do is heat the bottom and then have the solder flow to the bottom from the top. And uh, that generally works good. This is still a little bit in the way here. Make sure you don't get too much solder buildup on your tip. And then we'll take a look at it with the microscope. Alright guys, so you can see that there's just a little bit too much solder on there for my liking. You're not touching, but there's a lot of, a lot of flux in between there, so I'm just going to go ahead and just get some solder off these pens with this side, just my, uh, my iron here. That's a little bit better.
I'm going to solder some headers on here on this little board. I'm going to do something a little bit different though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some solder on this guy here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up again and I'm going to raise this guy up. Um, <laughs> if I can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and raise this guy up a little bit because I want the pins flush. I don't want them sticking up because um, where it's going to be mounted, it's going to be really really tight. And so I am just about there. And I'm also only going to solder the ones I need. I'm not going to line the whole thing with headers. Obviously, it won't fit in a breadboard if you put all four of them on. Um, the other reason is, is because they're very easy to take out this way. If you just use not a lot of solder just to um, an adequate amount, but enough to. Um, I don't need any other reference. I do need five volts. And of course, I do need RX and TX for FTDI. So, and I do need, um, because this is a blank chip from the factory, from good old Mouser, I do need the other headers too. And so, um, here you can see I have the MOSI, uh, the MISO, and the SCK. So we'll go ahead and, and then uh, reset it up here with the FTDI. But I need to. Just go ahead and make those flush and we'll solder these guys too real quick. And that's it. Let's put some software on it. Alright guys, now we're all done soldering. So we have this hooked up to a USB tiny ISP from Adafruit. Really good program. If you're doing anything with ABRs, uh, definitely need to get a program. I highly recommend this one. I've had it for a long time. It works perfect. So, um, we have this all hooked up here and I'm going to burn a bootloader. And one thing that I'm going to change before I do is I have a 0.1 microfarad cap in between the DTR and the reset line of this 328. And uh, when you burn a bootloader, I found out that it does not work that way. So if you take your reset line, um, what I did on this board is I purposely put a via right here. That's the via that goes right to the reset line. So if I just hold that on there, and then I click burn bootloader, uh, what will happen is it will go ahead and it will burn that bootloader on. So this is now burning the Arduino bootloader on this chip. This allows me to then take an FTDI adapter and plug it in here and put software on it. Now there are much faster ways of doing this, uh, but for uh, the sake being now, I'm just going to show you this way. This is probably the simplest way is uh, just to do this directly through the IDE. So uh, while this is burning here, we're going to fast forward until it's done and then we'll just throw some software on it. Okay guys, fast forward and it's done programming now and you can see that we're successfully running the blink sketch. Yay! Okay guys, so now we have our bootloader on here and now let's uh, hook up an FTDI adapter. This is, I'll probably do this in a future post, but this is an FTDI adapter that I made. Um, does some stuff that um, some of the ones out there do not do. Uh, just two minor things. So anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and plug this in. You see we have power here. Refocus this guy here. and. Um, still running the blink sketch with the software in there and then we'll just go ahead and then we'll put a sketch on it that basically um, it's uh, blinks without a P it pulses without a PWM and there you go Let's throw my camera for a loop here but you can see that it's uh, it's working and it responds to programming so that's it. So this is a really, really neat thing. I'm going to show you some other applications when we get it, um, when I get those ready, and then uh, hopefully this will help you out in soldering TQFP packages and using a little bit of hot air as well. Happy hacking!